Today we're going to be doing an in-depth analysis of the QQQ ETF versus the SPY ETF. Which of these two ETFs is the best? Stick around and you'll find out. In this video we're going to compare the sector and stock concentration between SPY and QQQ. Which one of these ETFs has 50% in one sector one of these ETFs also has 30% of the portfolio in just three different stocks. We'll also look at risk, so which one of these ETFs fell top to bottom 81%. We'll take a look at that. And then we'll also look at performance. Which one of these ETFs has had the best performance over the long term? And then we'll also talk about which one of these ETFs is positioned today to do the best in the future. First of all, let's talk about the index construction. So the QQQ is an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ 100. That is simply the top 100 non-financial stocks that trade on the NASDAQ exchange. It is a market cap weighted index, which means the more the company, the, the, the greater the value of the company, the larger the weight in the index. So if a stock were to double in overall value, the index would then double its weighting. The SPY tracks the widely popular and widely cited S&P 500 index. This is both the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange exchanges and it is also market cap weighted and it's generally the, the 500 largest companies uh, in the United States. Uh, there are some ADRs and things like that in there, but in general the S&P represents about 80% of the total U.S. stock market, so it's widely considered to be the best benchmark of the U.S. market. The sector weights, SPY versus QQQ. Uh, so here we have, I'm just going to highlight a couple of the main differences. Um, so the QQQ is overweight by 5% in consumer cyclical, so think of Starbucks and things like that, more discretionary purchases. Uh, a huge difference is in financials. So the QQQ follows the NASDAQ, which is all non-financial companies. Uh, so this is a, a huge difference. Real estate is about the same. Uh, communication services, the QQQ is pretty heavily overweighted at 21% compared to the S&P at 11%. Uh, energy, neither one has tremendous exposure. Industrials, uh, the S&P has a bit more exposure there. Uh, the huge difference here is in this technology allocation. Um, the QQQ has 44% of the index invested in technology stocks. Uh, if you consider some of these communication services companies uh, like Google, for example, um, they would be probably more thought of as technology, but in this particular case, they're listed as communication services, which was just broken out. So when you combine these two, it's very, very technology focused, uh, which could be a good thing as it's been the last couple of years, or it could be a very bad thing. So the main driver to me of whether you should buy QQQ versus SPY is do you want that much exposure to technology or not? That's necessarily a big question. Defensive is about the same. Uh, the S&P does have substantially more exposure to healthcare, and then just modestly a little bit more in utilities. Uh, going here to a, a step uh, lower, let's look at the individual stock holdings. The SPY, uh, the largest holding currently is Microsoft at 5.6%. QQQ also owns Microsoft at a 11.4% weighting. So more than 10% of the portfolio is in Microsoft, and that's not even the largest holding. Apple is the largest holding in QQQ, about the same exact weighting as Microsoft. Um, when you combine Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon in QQQ, uh, over 30% of the portfolio is weighted in these three stocks. So. These have done exceptionally well over the last few years, which is the reason why QQQ has also done uh, incredibly well. But there is a lot of concentration in these couple names. 
Uh, if you add up all of these top 10 holdings, uh, this represents about 56% of the QQQ. Contrast that with the S&P, which is about 25% made up of these top 10 holdings. So QQQ, again, much more concentrated in these individual stocks. Uh, fundamentals, let's look at valuation picture here. We've got a uh, PE of 21 times for the S&P 500. Contrast that with QQQ trading at a uh, pretty significant uh, higher PE at nearly 27. Price to book is nearly two times higher for QQQ. Price to sales is nearly two times higher. Price to cash flow also higher. Dividend yield is about half for the uh, QQQ. And, but the, the, the trade-off here is that you, you're paying more for the current earnings, but those earnings are expected to grow a lot faster. So long-term earnings growth is expected to grow at 12.4% for QQQ. Contrast that with the S&P, which is expected to grow about 9%. Um, so you can see all these sales growth numbers are massively favoring QQQ. Again, it's more of a growth index. Um, you would expect to pay a little bit of a premium on a PE and get more for that money as far as, as growth goes. Um, so now let's look at risk. Which of these two indices is more volatile? So we've got the drawdowns for the S&P here in green, the drawdowns for the NASDAQ in blue. So you can see that each one of these drawdown periods, the NASDAQ dropped quite a bit more. Uh, in some cases, uh, twice as, more, as much. So in the, the tech bubble right here, two times greater, and in the 0809 financial crisis, also two times greater of a drop for the NASDAQ. So this is quite a bit more of a risky fund, the QQQ. And now let's look at performance. Which index has performed the best since 1971? So my methodology for looking at this was to start with the underlying index. So the S&P 500 goes back farther than 1971, but the NASDAQ only goes back to February 4th of 1971. So we're going to start both of those at the exact same time. I'm going to run those through 5-27-2020, which is today. And then I'm going to subtract the fees um, that the ETF would have charged. I'm using the current fees for each fund. And so the total return minus the fees equals the estimated performance that these two ETFs would have generated from 1971 to today. The winner was QQQ. It produced a compound annual return of 9.44% net of fees. And again, uh, those fees are 0.2%. Tracking the NASDAQ 100 uh, from these dates, the S&P 500 came in at over 2% per year less than that. So again, same methodology. The only difference here is this 0.1% annualized fees, which is what SPY charges. So the question becomes, which of these should you buy? And I would say... Neither. I mean, if you're going to force me to choose one of these, I'll tell you which one I would choose. But if you're going to, you know, if you've got anything that you can buy, I think there are much better options than either one of these. Uh, for one, there are better options for getting exposure to the S&P 500. Uh, there's one fund, VOO, that actually has a little bit less of a fee than, um, than the SPY does. So that's, of course, going to be a better uh, slightly better returns for you long term. Uh, and then if you want better performance, there are better funds to provide not just better total performance, but also more consistent performance through time. So I will talk about that in next week's video. I'll show you guys which ETF that is. It actually outperformed QQQ by almost 3% per year. So uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified when that video comes out. Um, if if not, I'll post a link to that video right here uh, after next week goes by and you guys can watch that. Uh, and then also if you want less risk, I think there's better options than really either SPY or QQQ. But between these two funds, I, I think it's QQQ could be a better 
decision, better investment for some people, and SPY could be a better decision for others. And in fact, you could buy both of these, honestly. I think QQQ, if you're looking for performance and you don't mind the risk, so if you don't mind your portfolio maybe dropping by 70 to 80 percent uh, over the course of a, a full business cycle and you want to get a couple extra percent, um, QQQ could be a good good investment choice for you. Uh, you also want to make sure that looking forward, you're optimistic about the technology sector. It's very heavy in technology. So it could be that you know we're at kind of peak optimism for technology stocks. I see a lot of people that are they can't wait to buy you know technology. They think value is dead, growth is taking over. And that generally is the time when the exact reverse happens. Uh, so when everyone else is really greedy, that's when we should be more conservative. And when everyone else is being really conservative, that's when we should be more greedy. At the moment, I personally see a lot of greed in the technology stocks like QQQ is focused on. So just watch out for that. That could be uh, a negative for future performance for the SPY, I would say this is a much better choice if you're just looking for a core diversified holding um, that maybe you put 50, you know, 50% 50 of your portfolio in this one fund. You really can't beat SPY when it comes to just getting broad access to every single sector. Um, this is also a good one if you want a little bit more stability than QQQ. So historically, uh, the drawdowns have been closer to 50% for SPY, which is still a lot, but uh, it's nowhere near 80% that we just saw with QQQ. Um, and also, if you think the technology valuations are a little high, the SPY has about 22% or so in technology, which is a lot less than the you know nearly 50% that the QQQ has, and even more if you consider some of those communication stocks as basically techs. 